Hello everybody and welcome to my Season 9 Division 4 of Rebel G-Man preview. Um, now this should be a really good season. It's it's interesting what they do in Rebel. Rather than having uh, tiers with promotion and relegation, they basically just put the sort out the divisions manually and uh, you know compare it by performance basically. And uh, what they've done with this is most of the teams have played about 20 games with a really good record. So this is, there's going to be a lot of good games here, a lot of... Uh, you know a lot of close matches and uh, you know some of these records are going to go by the wayside it, it should be honestly the, the records in this division are way better than the ones in the first division because obviously they haven't met other good teams basically <laughs> so and so this is where it's all it's all going to get sorted out uh, there's a couple of teams that we're waiting for um, but I've still I've still managed to find them for the preview so let's have a look at all the teams okay so first up we've got lounging lizards um, it is a clearly lizard man, Hindi. Um, he has a T Rex, Croxigo, very good. I mean, it, the development here is is absolute insanity. Um, his record is fourteen two six. This is actually isn't true because one of these losses was a playoff um, miss next, like clearing miss next games admin loss. So th these, I know that for sure. So I'm not sure how accurate the other records are. But every, everyone in this division has a really good record. I, it's probably the most competitive division in the whole of G-Man, to be honest. Um, because just due to the fact that obviously the top divisions have played more games, the teams in the higher divisions have played more games against other people with reading records, whereas these were all... All the teams in this division are ones that have basically been promoted. You know, young teams with incredible records. So 14-2-6 isn't actually that good a record, even 14-2-5 for this division, which is crazy. Um, it's, but it's still a great record, clearly. The development that he's got after only, well, 21 games, it turns out, is insane. These these Saurus are unbelievable. That's going to be, I mean, you know, three three Bludge, well, okay, one Dodge, two Bludge Saurus, a Strength 5 Saurus, block, two Block Skinks, <laughs> Guard, Block Croxagore. It's It's insane now the the lead composition is uh we have i think two chaos teams two chaos dwarf teams three necromantic teams three lizard men teams so so some others um it's going to be interesting because if you can keep this team together it's it should be absolutely dominant um of course there there is there are uh, there is coaching involved and inducements and what have you uh but i think I think you know he's got the highest TV and his team is unbelievable. So I think Hindi starts as the favourite for sure. Whether he'll be able to stay the favourite against the the Sea of Claw, I mean I th I think he should. Necromantic teams struggle because their their, their Claw guys are strength three. Um, the Orcs are actually a very strong team. The Chaos have the strength four blitzers, but again they they, they haven't got the block, they haven't got the guard. They haven't got tackle for the skinks, so I reckon I reckon this could be this could be the winner of the division here. Okay, next up we've got Kedgeroos with Prof Parasthesia's pets. Uh, okay, um, he's seventeen sixty TV there, eleven one eight record, and um, which is actually the worst in this in this <laughs> in this uh, division. Um, kind of, you know. Only only block on the fleshies. Only only mighty blow guard there, guard there. Only one ghoul. But fifteen players. Um lots of regen. Good against the bash matchups. And here what a player. Block, jump up, piling on. Claw mighty blow. That's a hell of a werewolf. And he's about to level up as well pretty soon. So a werewolf. I always get stick for saying werewolf, but werewolf, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the other one's close to getting blodge as well. So, I mean, they're both close to, to leveling here. I mean, maybe he'll go tackle, actually, with the jump up and the claw pom. But, I mean, he's obviously a very scary player. Amazing. Not not so scary for the Lizardmen teams, of course, and the Orcs and stuff, uh, where being strength three and frenzy is a nega trait. But against the Chaos and the other Necros and the Wood Elves and the Undead and the chaffs he should be he should be an absolute weapon <laughs> the size of this lad an absolute unit 
Right, so I, I don't I don't know how the I don't know how the necros will do. Um, they do have one good player, but again, you know, you can you can try to frenzy trap them and stuff. So it'll be interesting for them. Okay, here are the Orcs of Letters, coached by Poopy. Uh, fifteen four two record for these guys, which is pretty outstanding, isn't it? Amazingly, not the best record in the division. <laughs> um, what a team it is! A strength five out. Okay, he's a thrower. But he's strength five. That's outrageous. A strength four piling on mighty blow blitzer. Two guard tackle mighty blow. Another guard, more block. This is a beast of a team. Now, the only weakness is they're in a claw heavy division. Will the necros and the chaos and the chaffs will will the claw make a difference? I tell you what, if the claw doesn't doesn't fire, it's gonna be very tough for them. They've got the goblin troll combo for one turning and uh, yeah I think I think that teams are going to struggle against this unless they get the removals for sure so um, yeah un unbelievable record but um, let's let's see how it does I mean I think I think they'll be a strong favorite if they can keep the team together and and this is this is a very bashy division there's only one wood elf team and all the rest of bash teams so it's going to be a lot of it is going to be decided by attrition and uh, maybe if like teams just get a wizard and stuff that can do something um, but this is this is a really great team right now <laughs> will it stay that way we'll have to see okay so here we have Gren Drake's lizard men uh, lizards from dimension X weighing in at 1660 TV with a 15 no with a 1052 excuse me a 1052 record very good. Um, this is more what you'd expect from a lizard man team that's played seventeen games. You know, he's he's got double skills, and this is still good. This is a, still a good lizard man team. It's just not an outrageous, ridiculous lizard man team like Hindi's team. Uh, but he's got three guard. He's got all block on the Saurus. Um, a tackle, a break tackle, a mighty blow. Quite well rounded. Two movement up skinks, one with sidestep, one with sprint. Block, block, sure hands. This is a really good team again. It's it's all going to come down to if these teams can survive to uh, to get the results, isn't it, really? I mean, but starting, all teams look, look pretty good and all the records are really good as well. <laughs> and now we have my silly team, uh, Team Fantastic, 1630 currently. They are waiting a skill up. The record is eight eight two four, which is uh, it's actually one of the worst records in this in this division. Um, and as you can see, I've gone for a very kind of stupid brainless chaos route here. I did pick up this uh, beast man in free agency. Another block mighty blow, block mighty blow, claw mighty blow. Probably going to take piling on, claw mighty blow, claw mighty blow, piling on. <laughs> and you know, all of my games are basically going to come down to if I kill a bunch of players. If I don't, if I don't remove anyone, the games are going to be really hard. Now, this was the kind of tactical, strategical decision that I made, thinking I want to skill players up as fast as possible, and also. If I'm playing teams that I'm at a disadvantage against, you know, um, now I'm actually I'm actually fourth in in a fifth. Well, yeah, fifth, fifth in TV here in this division, kind of. Um, but you know, I, I figured if I'm playing disadvantaged, like like for example, Hindi's Lizardman team, he's got a bunch of guard, he's got a bunch of strength. If I've got some guard, it ain't gonna cut it. I've got to get lucky to win, so I've given myself the tools to get lucky, which is claw pom. So <laughs> you know, and, and people aren't going to want to play this team, really, are they? There's a lot of mighty blow and a lot of claw and a lot of piling on in this team. So you know, Guy de Coron is close to getting a, another piling on here. So I could have three claw pom after game one, which you know, no one's going to really enjoy facing that. And uh, yeah, if, if I roll well, I could win every game. But there's there's obviously going to be games where I don't roll well, and uh, Particularly against the Wood Elves in week one, I have no tools against them whatsoever. No sure hands, no tackle. So uh, week one's going to be a very tough game for, the, for these guys. So there you go. Now, the other Chaos team is Revenge of Power Up, coached by Rasta. 1630 TV, 854 record. And he's pretty much the opposite of, well, yeah, he's, he's not built a standard team. He's gone in the other direction to me, which is, you know, 
dodge two bludgers a dodger um two agility four guys um, so he's basically i'm not sorry three agility four guys i didn't even think one would a warrior would have it so two blood warriors as well um it's an interesting team i mean he must be a good coach because he's got an eight four eight five four with it um it's it's you know it's an, it's a non-standard chaos build i mean when you think this could be four warriors with block guard I think that would honestly be better. I think my team would be better if it was a four block guard as well. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. So he's he's gone more of a more of an agility route than a than a crazy kill all men's route. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. Now we have Wayne Farah's Necros Wolverine Wraiths. This is actually I think this is a really good looking team. Um, Eleven six three record, sixteen twenty TV, and it's got pretty much. I mean, it's got really good flesh golems, block guard, mighty blow, block guard. Really good white, strength four, black guard, mighty blow. A tackle, mighty blow, white. The wolves, I guess, are a little bit lacking, only having an agility one here, but you know, he's he's close to getting dodge and block on him. Well, dodge or block, and then the other one, obviously, he'll be scoring most of the touchdowns. Um, a random ghoul there, only one ghoul. Uh, bludge tackle, I mean, bludge tackle wolf is still a really good wolf. So yeah, his his walls are a little bit lacking, but it's a solid, solid base to build on. And uh, yeah, you know, eleven six three is not to be sniffed at record, is it? So he's got the dirty player there. He's got a decent TV. I think this could be a, a danger team for sure um, in the division. Absolutely. The the only problem is, flesh golems have pretty much got to. Uh, Got to get punched <laughs> because you really want to protect your ghoul, your wolves, and your whites. So fleshies take tend to take a lot of stick. Now, although they've got regen, they don't like getting hit by mighty blow all the time, do they? Nobody does. And I guess it's a little light on the bash with only claw and then three mighty blow. So I guess it's a little lighter on the bashing side. But um, you know, three guard, three strength four. I think this this could do could go places. This team, right? Here's my. Uh, Week one opponent, Tumbling Dice, coached by, coached by Da Coach, <laughs> Wood Elves, obviously 1560 TV, and a 962 record, so they don't very lose very often, and I don't think they'll be losing to me either. <laughs> a strength four war dancer with strip and mighty blow, um, a bunch of bludge, a bunch of dodge, some agility five, a guard. Um, when it comes to winning Blood Bowl games, this team is a lot better than mine. <laughs> now, of course, my claws wasted. I've only got three claw. I've got a lot of block and mighty blow, um, and some piling on. So there's a chance for me to just dice him. But you know, when it comes to actually playing blood ball, his team looks pretty good. Now, and this goes for everyone in the division. You know, if if he can survive the dwarves and the chaffs, um, you know, maybe he can win a lot of games. You'd imagine it's going to be very costly to his players though. And uh, yeah, you know, this could be really be a uh, a journeyman shit show by the end of the season <laughs> you could end up with about three rostered players on the other hand he's got a lot of dodge he can keep disengaging and it, it could be it could it could go very well for him it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how this team uh goes through I mean, especially the necros are going to be fouling him as well so that he's got a good he's got good matchups in the three lizard men team um although obviously they're still gonna they've still got all the strength on that um I mean, what a terror! What a terror his war dancer is, and he's got another one about to get tackled, presumably. So yeah, going to be very interesting to see how how his team progresses or regresses throughout the season. Right, next up is the uh, is the crematorium crew, coached by Buford T. Justice. They were, we were in the same division last season. He's a dead team, obviously. Fifteen forty, thirteen one one record, <laughs> which is clearly an unbelievable record, best record in the division. He nearly had a perfect season. He went, what, 12-1-0 um, the first season, beat me. And, uh, you know, it, it's just unbelievable, really, to do that. Now, the thing is, of course, with this being undead, they're already slipping off the top, even just after one season. Um, I think they'll, they'll do well. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's. I don't think he's uh, not going to do well. He's got three guard, couple of strength five, couple of agility four, Palmer with jump up. I mean, he's got a really nice team, but already the necros are starting to catch them, and uh, the chaos even and the chaffs. 
lizard men so it's going to be interesting I, I don't think he'll drop off this season but maybe the next season he'll, he'll I mean, it's just hard not to drop off when you've gone 12-1-0 in your first first season but um, just in terms of being favourite to win the matches I think he's, he's already going to start to struggle um, a little bit and uh, you know but he certainly he certainly plays well so It'll, it, it, you know, it's again. It's gonna. It's gonna be a question of whether his team survives, and uh, you know, if the other teams are just too good for his team. Basically, that's that's the problem with undead. So now we have the aptly named sixteen turns of headache dwarf team, coached by Skulls, fifteen thirty TV, ten one six record, and uh, yeah, he's got a lot of guard. He's got not actually that much mighty blow, but he does have. <laughs> Frenzy, Block, Tackle, Juggernaut Piling on Mighty Blow He does have an Agility 4 runner So um, Yeah, this is going to be a pain in the ass For people to play, basically If they don't Oh, he's even taking Tackle on the Blitzers Interesting That's a lot of Tackle <laughs> You could bench the runner and play 11 Tackle players On, on defence or something Um so yeah, that's that's an interesting, interesting build, isn't it? I would have personally gone. I'd probably stand firm on the blitzers here. I think tackle on the. I'd have gone juggernaut before tackle on the troll slayer. But um, that's that's an interesting team, isn't it? Again, it it's going to come down to does he survive the claws? He probably can survive the claws of the necros just due to the uh, guard spam. Um, the lizard men he might struggle a bit, but again, fifty fifty. If you can if you can nail the skinks or if you can remove the odd saurus for this guy um lizard men are going to struggle against this team so obviously what else has got infinite tackle for the woodies it's just going to come down to the chaos and the chaos does claw fire if it does he's going to have a bad time and so next up we have mutated meatballs coached by thanos 1520 tv chaufs 932 record <laughs> another great record um four guards a strength four two strength four chaff blockers is outrageous Really poor bull centaurs for this many games. Maybe they've been injured the other ones, or maybe he just hasn't leveled them, seeing as he's got such great development on his uh, blockers. But that is really fan incredible. Never mind fantastic, incredible development on his dwarf blockers. So I guess he just focused on them rather than the bulls. Um, he's got a he's got a nice little bludge, sure hands carrier. Um, I would have rather had those 36 SPPs and the bulls. That's why I don't build bull centaur carriers as a rule, but I tend to carry on them just to skill them up. Now, I think his team would be a lot better if he had 36 star player points on these two bulls. Um, having said that, you know, they, they will skill up eventually. And, uh, yeah, the, the blocker development is outrageous. I mean, he's only got one claw, so, you know... A lot, of, a lot of fuss is made about there being a lot of claw teams in this division, but really, the Necros... They're strength three with frenzy, so you can deal with it a little bit. You can foul them as well um, if you get the chance. And the chaffs, they need doubles for the claw. So really, it's only the chaos team. Now, Rasta's chaos team is not a rowdy chaos team. So really, there's only my team that has a lot of claw in the in the whole division. Uh, though, though to be fair, two of the necro teams have claw upon wolves, <laughs> but still. Um. The, the core isn't really the threat here, it's the strength, the guard, and the mighty blow. And, and the, you know, some games the claw mighty blow will be fantastic. Uh, and, you know, obviously 9-3-2, he definitely knows how to play. So, he, he could he could do very well, but really he needs to work on those bulls. Those bulls are disappointing. I mean, I guess, look, next game he could level both of them. And then it looks a lot better. So, they're, they're both on the verge of levelling. So is uh, this this blocker here, isn't he? This blocker here, they, he, he could get a lot more levels quickly as well. Very nice team. Now we have the Meme Land Bashers, coached by Ramhard, 1410 TV, though there is a 240 TV bull sent or missing. And a 1286 record, so not, not the greatest record. I mean, it's still good, but for this division, it's uh, it's not so good. Um, but wow, what a team this is. <laughs> um, the development on his bulls is absolutely outstanding. His bulls, his blockers is absolutely outstanding here. Mighty blow guard, mighty blow guard stand firm. You know, it's really good, isn't it? I, I don't like the guard instead of piling on, I would say. I, but uh, a guard hobgoblin as well. Again, no, no wasted star player points on, on a hobgoblin carrier. 
So he's able to have a really good ball centre here. Dodge, break tackle, agility. I'm not sure I'd have taken agility there, actually, after you've already got dodge and break tackle. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it's okay. It's better with dodge, isn't it? Because he could more chance of him using the agility three and then saving the break tackle um, till later. And then a rookie, a rookie ball. So he's, he's pretty weak the first game. But after that, I mean, the, the, this, this chalk block at core is amazing. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting to see how he goes. Um, yeah, pretty rowdy. And uh, speaking of rowdy, here we have Muppet Tillo, his necromantic team, Skyriders CBB, fourteen ten TV, and uh, ten two one record, incredible record. A nice fleshy there, an okay fleshy there, pretty good ball carrier ghoul, and uh, oh, what's this? A claw palm werewolf, brilliant. <laughs> He's only got one wolf. But what a wolf it is. Um, that's going to basically decide the games, isn't it, that he's taken part in. If if this werewolf can just kill everything, he's looking good. If it gets fouled or blitzed and removed, he's going to really struggle. Eh? Although, although he's got a nice ball carrier, tackle mighty blow blitzer, um, it basically everything hinges on this werewolf. He's got to protect him, which is going to limit his impact on games anyway. So... I don't know, maybe maybe this is a, more of a building season for him. I, I guess his his other werewolf died. I mean, to have gone ten two one, right? He must have had he must have had two, because this is just an absolute one man team now. Um and he's gotta be very careful with this player. Okay, and last last and least on team value, but actually not least, because he has 120k Soros missing. It's Ready Lizard One, coached by Holy Boy. He went thirteen one two in his first season, which is very good, isn't it? Um yeah, he's, he's got a block guard Saurus missing. He's actually had a Saurus die as well. So once he uh, once he replaces the dead Saurus and this guy comes back, he's starting to have a look. Agility 5 skinks insane, isn't it? If he's got a wizard in any games, that's going to be unbelievable. But um, yeah, this has come more, again, like what you'd expect. Is is, is Saurus are all right, but nothing nothing amazing. Not like, not like Hindi's. Um... This is again like he's already kind of death spiraling, isn't he? Only four, only four Saurus for the next game, and then if he's getting hit by all the mighty, there's so there's so much mighty blow in this league. There's not actually that much claw palm, uh, be, just because the necros I think are limited in their application of it, and the chaos don't have it. The chaffs only have claw mighty. Um, you know maybe the orcs will be the most the most bashy team in this division probably actually. Oh no! There's that. There's the there's the Chaos Dwarf team with it. The Chaos Dwarf team does have a have a lot of mighty blow. The uh, meme land bashes, but yeah, it's 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 really not much of a team. But he's gone thirteen one two, so it'll be interesting to see how he does in this division. And to round it up, this is the fixtures for the first week. As you can see down here, I'm playing the Wood Elves, which is a very bad matchup for me. We've got. Uh, the Pets, Kedgy Ruses, Necromantic versus the Mutated Meatballs, Chaos Dwarves. Um, yeah, I mean, that's this is it's a bit rough for Chaff's Lizard Men matchup because they've got so much more strength. But of course, if, if his claw works or just Mighty Blow, just gets removals, it becomes, you know, it could switch. Wolverine Race, I really, I really like this team. And I, I know William Fair is a good coach versus Meanland Bashers, so that's going to be an interesting matchup, isn't it? Ramhard's chaffs. <laughs> will will he ram him hard or not? Launching <laughs> uh, lizards versus orcs of letters. Well, this is two of the favourites, isn't it? Hindi's eighteen twenty lizard men and Putley's seventeen ten orcs. That's going to be that's going to be two powerhouses. That's going to be probably crucial to see who decides with, who wins the league this match. Actually, huge. Uh, crematorium crew, the unbelievable record, versus Grindrake's lizard men. Um, yeah, and all already at this stage, that's the kind of game where Undead are down TV, and it's a good lizard man team. It, it, it could struggle. I couldn't resist it going mine first, but uh, <laughs> let's go back to it. Sixteen sixteen fifty chaos versus uh, fifteen sixty woodies. You know it's. I think he will win, um, but hopefully I'll do some damage. <laughs> the dwarves there, sixteen her sixteen turns of headache versus Holy Boys, lizard men. 
Um, it, it's he's got he's got a lot of inducements. Oh, he doesn't actually does it because he's down to he's down to nine players there, I think. Oh, I can't remember. Let's gloss over the fact, but he he, he might get he might get something <laughs> if he gets if he gets uh, what's he called um, silly Billy Slibly Slib whatever they, whatever they call him on Blood Bowl two. Um, that's good if he's got loads of skinks. This is a bad game actually to have have skinks exposed, isn't it? The fact he's playing against all the tackle, ten ta t at least ten tackle on the pitch. This is a really not the match we wanted when he's missing Saurus. So this this could really hurt him and hurt his chances in the league. Uh, Revenge of Power up is Rasta's Chaos versus Skyrider CBB the Necro. So yeah, the one man team. Plays the blodgy agility team. Interesting, interesting matchup there. So um, I will be doing the Rebel Roundup every every week of the division, um, looking at all the matches and everything. So that should be good. And uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.